going on everyone? It's the Brent House and today we are filming the installation video of the Lucky Bot. Guys, this is a chocolate extruder. It's incredible and it can be mounted to almost every single 3D printer. Today I'm installing it on the Ender 3 V2. But uh, guys, you can modify these instructions to put it on pretty much any other printer, any printer you've got. Anyway guys, let's get right into it. <laughs> One more thing if at any point in the video you find anything with this installation process helpful please drop me a like and a subscribe put some comments below and tell me what you want to see printed out of chocolate guys this is going to be quick it's gonna be informative let's get started all right guys so before we start I have two notes to make now on my printer I have already loosened or removed a bunch of bolts just to make this video easier obviously guys expect your nuts and bolts to be harder to remove also, guys, I am doing this and installing this LuckyBot on an Ender 3 V2. If you are installing the LuckyBot on a different printer, please expect there to be slight differences here and there, but the overall steps will be the same. So the very first thing that I'll be doing is removing the screen. I'm only removing the screen in order to keep it safe so I don't break it. I don't want to be breaking anything. After we remove the screen, the next thing we're going to want to do is access the motherboard. Now the motherboard has on the Ender 3 v 2 has four screws. One of the screws is going to be right here on the top. S unscrew that and then we're going to flip the unit on its side. And of course you can tell that I have already removed the uh, bottom panel, but your bottom panel is going to be like this. And you're going to have three more screws to take care of. You're going to have one screw over here, and then you're going to have two screws right here. Remove them to gain access to the motherboard, and then we're going to go on to the next step. So on the next step, we're going to be removing the BL touch or the CR touch. We're going to be removing the fan shroud, and we're going to be removing the hot end. Now, guys, the BL touch or CR touch is not required to be removed permanently. However, there is no default stock mount for the BL touch or the CR touch. If you want to maintain the usage of your BL touch, your CR touch or your auto level or whatever it is, you're going to have to make a custom mount. So for right now, regardless, it has to be removed. If you want to add it back later, you're going to have to make a custom mount. So for me, the BL touch gets removed with two screws. And then we're going to remove the cable. Then we're going to turn the entire printer around and get access to this screw right here. We're going to remove this screw and that is going to fully loosen the fan shroud. Again, if you're on an Ender 3 V2 like I am, then your fan shroud should come off. If your fan shroud does not come off, be careful. There is a clip, a pressure fit clip on the left side over here. Just go ahead and gently tug that off. Now guys, be careful. This is uh, attached with wires and you do not want to rip too hard or you might break the wires. So once you have the fan shroud out of the way and you have access to the nozzle and the heat block, go ahead and remove these two screws that attach the heat block to the actual uh, Y axis gantry. When that comes off, guys, again, be very careful. You have more wires and everything is loose. Go ahead and push all of these off to the side don't touch them to anything, just be very careful that they don't break. From there, the very last thing that we need to remove is our Bowden tube from our extruder. Go ahead and unscrew that. And now you should have the entire uh, front assembly that you can just set aside and it will dangle and be free. Guys, be careful again because that could be tripped on and if you trip on that and break all the wires, it's game over. All right, guys, so if you intend to install the WL wheel 60 millimeter adapter plate in order to get 60 millimeters of extra clearance, I will not be installing that. And that installation is going to be drastically different for every printer out there. So this is the time for you to consult your printer manual. I have saved all of the printer manuals for all the printers I've got. Hopefully you've done the same. 
or if your printer manual does not have that guys consult YouTube on how to remove the Y axis components you're gonna have to remove the belt install the belt onto the WL wheel and then you're gonna have to slide the WL wheel onto the Y axis guys so go ahead and do that now now we are going to be installing the Lucky Bot adapter plate onto the Y axis with these small black screws. You should have received four or five of them in your kit. Go ahead and take the adapter plate and just like this, we're going to go ahead and put the screw in and we are going to screw it in like so. At this point, it's time to install the actual Lucky Bot. Now go ahead and move your Z axis high enough that your Lucky Bot will fit just like this. Now we're going to be screwing the Lucky Bot in with these bottom screw holes, except we're gonna be screwing them in from the back. And once again, we're gonna be using these small black screws that came in the package. All right, guys, if you are by yourself, you are on the struggle bus just like me. If you have help, consider yourself lucky. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing is moving our Z-axis limit switch. So the first thing I like to do is lift the Z-axis and place something thick below it. I conveniently have the motherboard cover. It's about a half millimeter to a millimeter thick and that will do just fine. From there, go ahead and unscrew your Z-axis limit switch and unplug it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna push it until it stops. Push it as far as you can until it stops. Go ahead and Tighten your screws, this way it does not fall. Once your screws are tight, go ahead and take your Z-axis extension wire, your limit switch extension wire, it's gonna look like this. Plug it directly into the cable at the bottom where your Z-axis limit switch normally was. And then you plug the other end into your limit switch. Now, if you're on an Anycubic series printer, your Z-axis limit switch extension cable is this, so I've heard. I do not have an Anycubic printer to confirm that, but supposedly this is your extension wire. This next step is not necessary, but it is just for good measure. Go to your extruder motor and check to make sure that it is the E-axis cable. Go ahead and also unplug it. The next step is just a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna give you a brief overview. First thing we're going to be doing is installing the big cable. Now this provides independent power to the Lucky Bot so when the 3D printer is turned off, the Lucky Bot can still be turned on in order to preheat chocolate. Now it also has an extruder cable because we obviously need to be able to move the extruder, whether it's through G-code or through the move menu in the 3D printer. We're also going to be dealing with the little TRM module that comes with your Lucky Bot. Now the TRM module stands for Temperature Resistance Module and this tricks the 3D printer into thinking it is always 190 degrees Celsius at the nozzle. And that's helpful because we need to be able to actuate the extruder through the move menu in your 3D printer's screen. And if, you're, if, if your nozzle is not 190 degrees Celsius, then it will prevent you from moving the extruder because it thinks the plastic is not going to be melted as it goes through the nozzle. Of course, we're not printing plastic and our chocolate melts at 36 degrees. Celsius. For this step, you are likely going to have to do a little bit of research yourself. I am currently using a Creality 4.2.2 motherboard. If you have the same motherboard, you can obviously follow the steps exactly as I am doing. The first thing we're going to be installing is the extruder cable. Now, moments ago, we just determined that our extruder is the E axis. It has the E on the wire bundle. So go ahead and find the E on the wire bundle and go ahead and unplug that. In my case, it is the bottom left port. Go ahead and plug that in. The next thing that we're dealing with is the TRM module. The TRM module gets plugged into the TH or the TO port on your motherboard. In my case, that is the very top left port. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug the cable that is in there and we're going to plug this directly in. So we are nearly ready to turn the Lucky Bot on. First, we have to deal with power. So the first thing is we are going to take this connector and plug it directly 
into the Lucky Bot. After that, we're gonna take this very weird power adapter that Lucky Bot provided us. One side of it is gonna go into the power adapter that Lucky Bot gave us. The other side of it is gonna go into our 3D printer. We are then going to take the barrel connector on the power adapter and plug it into the other part of this cable that went into our motherboard. After that, we're going to get the power connector, power cable that was provided by the printer and plug it into the weird power cable. And then everything is going to have power and it should be good to go. If you have not done so yet, go ahead and plug your screen back in and we are ready to supply power to the printer. Before you do that, be very, very cautious of your fan shroud as it is still plugged in and you do not want the fan to turn on and crush anything. You don't want to damage anything. Just be very, very careful. Turn your printer on. Hopefully everything is going to turn on as it should. Now we are going to check that our installation was done correctly. So go to the move menu on your printer and I want you to move the extruder and the goal is the extruder needs to be going in the downward direction. If the extruder is not going in the downward direction, then your installation is not complete. If your extruder goes in the downward direction, then your installation is complete and you can go ahead and button everything back up. You can put the motherboard cover on and you're good to go. So if your extruder appeared to not be moving when you went to the move menu and you made your extruder move in the positive direction, your extruder was actually attempting to move, but it was attempting to move up. It was not attempting to move down. When you put the move in the positive direction, it is supposed to go down. When you put the move in the negative direction, it is supposed to go up. So what you need to do is install your E-axis adapter wire. Now guys, it is imperative that you remove power from the machine. You just installed power. So go ahead and unplug the power from the wall. After that, go ahead back to your E-axis wire bundle, unplug that, go ahead and plug it directly into this adapter and then plug this adapter into the e-axis on the board then what i want you guys to do is repeat the last thing you did go to the move menu move the extruder in the positive direction and see if it moves down as it should and just like that the lucky bot is fully installed and functional guys just a couple things to remember don't forget to button your machine back up don't forget to plug your fan back in when you reinstall the bottom cover. Also, guys, don't forget you have your hot end and your fan shroud laying loose. Now, the Lucky Bot is being supplied independent power. It heats up all by itself. So if you command your hot end to 190 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius and it is laying on the table, you will start a fire. guys. Be very careful, do not command your hot end to any high temperatures if it is still plugged in, laying loose. I highly recommend you completely disassemble the hot end and everything this way, it's not laying loose. Up to you guys, but you know, just keep that in mind. Also guys, another thing to keep in mind is I previously had a BL Touch installed on this machine. That means I had BL Touch firmware installed on this machine. When you have the BL Touch firmware installed, it ignores the Z-axis limit switch. We are no longer using the BL Touch, so what you must do is you must go online and download the correct firmware for whatever printer you have in order to forget the BL Touch, in order for you to use the limit switch. So guys, just remember, if your printer does not home correctly, that is probably why. Anyway, guys, that is all that I have for this video. Please drop a like and a subscribe. Put some comments down below. Tell me what you guys want to see. Anyway, guys, I am out, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. See ya.